Listening, you guys should have had an opportunity to look through some stuff. What do you want to start with? Go ahead, Alexis. You want a. So Alexis is asking for this is in regard to a specific problem, though, right? Which problem is this at? This is one of the review questions. Okay, so this this is specific to one of the questions from the review. I think it was number. It happens in number four on the review. So let's look at number four, and we'll kind of tackle this question inside of number four. Does that sound okay to you, Alexis? Okay, just so everybody has to see this. So this is a multiplication division problem. Basically, all we need to do is to factor everything, rewrite it as a multiplication problem, reduce. So I'm just going to start by looking at the greatest common factor. And then we'll do the rest of our factoring and writing it as a multiplication problem. Oops. And inside of that, we'll highlight what Alexis is specifically talking about, which is asking about this piece right here correct okay okay so everybody okay with the greatest common factors that i've pulled that should be relatively easy factoring it's the first thing you want to check when you start to factor something though because if you catch those it makes life much much easier if you look at the stuff that's remaining all of those look pretty approachable except for maybe the x cubed plus eight piece that alexis wasn't sure what to do with um, so let's continue our factoring here. So nothing to do with the x minus 4 part. x squared minus 2x minus 8 we can factor because the two things that multiply to negative 8 and add to give us negative 2 are negative 4 and positive 2. Convert this from a multiplication or from a division problem to a multiplication problem. So I'm going to flip at the same time as I'm going to finish up my factoring. Now if I try, aren't two numbers that multiply to give us 4 and add to give us negative 2? So there's nothing more I can do with that, so I'm just going to recopy it. And notice that I've been moving this to the denominator. And now we have to worry about this x cubed plus 8 piece. So. If you remember from chapter 5, so that's going to be the tool that I'm going to use to factor this. So I noticed that x cubed would represent a value for a of x because x to the third is x cubed. And my b would have to be 2 because 2 to the third is 8. Is everybody okay with that as I'm matching x cubed plus 8 with a cubed plus b cubed? Right? So if x cubed is a cubed, a is x. If b cubed is 8, b is 3. Or b is 8. Or 2. Gee, goodness gracious. So now I can just fill these in. So a plus b is going to be x plus 2. a squared is x squared. Minus AB is minus 2X, and B squared is 4. Okay. Now that everything's factored, we can start crossing things out. So the X minus 4s can cancel. The X plus 2s can cancel. The X squared minus 2X plus 4s can cancel. I can cancel the X. Yes. For multiplication and division, okay. yes. For for addition and subtraction, no. Okay. okay? So I just get it. 
want to make sure we're being very clear on that question because the answer is really kind of sometimes. Yeah. In this problem, yes, because it's multiplication division. Um, there's still a little bit more reducing, so I can cancel the fives, and I can reduce the two and the four, so that can reduce down to a two. So what we're left with then in the numerator is just two, and the denominator just x squared. I think that was the worst factoring prop or the worst factoring piece that we ran into here. Um, there's another tricky difference of cube later on in the addition subtraction section. Um, but I think for the multiplication division stuff, that was the worst part. Okay, these hands, are these new questions or follow-ups to this one? Follow-ups to this one. Okay, let's handle those first. Joe? Okay, so the formula that you have on the bottom, we only use that when it's like something similar to that x squared plus 8, correct? Yes. So if it was like x squared plus 8, we wouldn't use that? No dice. Else? That thing is just not factorable at all, what you said, x squared plus 8? Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Megan? Okay. Thank you. Let's look at that real quick. Okay. So we'll do that. See, it's not that bad anymore when you're saying Because doing it is like just all of it. I understand. I understand. Again, like there's a lot of sub skills going on here that are, you know, like if you're not solid on those. It, everything slows down and it becomes easy to kind of get lower at. Ben. Can I ask for a new question? Yes, I think we're ready for a new question. Can we go over number 13 on the review? I'm confused how you got to that answer. Sure. Let's look here. Oh. Where did they go? All right, so Ben, number 13. Is this a solving problem? Mm -hmm. The first thing that I'd want to do is notice that this is not a proportion because I have two things being added on one side. So that tells me right away it's not a proportion. So the technique I'm going to use to solve this one is going to be the clearing fractions technique. I think I got, I got all of that for now. Just when I got closer to the end or I got down to like, a certain point, I didn't know how to get the answer. If okay. That makes sense. Yep. So we'll just kind of keep going, and you can holler at me like once we get there. Okay. So if I'm going to do clearing fractions, the first thing I'd want to do is to factor my denominators, because what I'm going to search for is the least common denominators, or the least common denominator for the. So if I look, I see three distinct prime factors. I see two. I see x's and I see x minus threes. Everybody okay with that? Now if I look at each of these individual fractions, the most time any of those factors occur inside an individual fraction is once. So that is my least common denominator is two to the first, x to the first, x minus three to the first. Is inside of a single fraction, none of those occur more than once. Is everybody okay with that? So what I'll do then is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation, denominator, and I'm going to rewrite what I have here. So the least denominator distributes to the first fraction. distributes to the third fraction. So far so good? Yeah. Now I'm going to reduce. So the x can reduce and the x minus 3's can reduce. And I'm left with just 2 times 2. 
Here are the two reduces and the x reduces, and I'm left with x minus 3. Here are the x minus 3's reduce, and I'm left with 2x times x plus 1. So far, so good? Okay. What I'm going to do is out. So 2 times 2 is 4. I'm going to FOIL that out and get x squared minus 9 and distribute that through to get 2x squared plus 2x. Still doing okay? Mm -hmm. What I notice what I have now is a quadratic equation. You see the x squareds? Yeah. To solve a quadratic, I have to get everything onto one side. So I'm going to move everything onto the right-hand side. So when I subtract an x squared over, I have just x squared, the 9, and subtract over the 4. So nothing to combine with the 2x, so that stays this space. So my solving a quadratic, I have three options. I can factor, I can solve directly, or I can use the quadratic formula. Now this problem I cannot solve directly because I have x's and x squareds in the same problem. It's out. I can't factor this because there aren't two numbers that multiply to give me 5 and add to give me 2. So that's out. I must use the quadratic formula to do this. Is of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. Four, and then 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. 4 minus 20. Because we have the square root of a negative, I know that makes an i. And then the square root of 16 is just 4. This is where I got off. When I was where you had the first x, the first um, negative 2 plus or minus, um, after that is where I got Are you good with where the i comes from? Not really. I think that's what part of the... Thing that I got so remember that i is the square root of negative 1. That can rewrite as negative 1 times 16, which is i square root 16. And then the square root of 16 is just the 4, so that's how, how it comes from. And now I can just rewrite this as two fractions to reduce. All over one denominator, I can write it as both of them over the same denominator. Would be K okay still for me. Now, if you're taking this, it would look like, but that's fine for me. But I would need to see the I and the square root 16 done to get full points, anyways. Ben, did that sort out what you needed? Yeah, because I got to the x equals uh, negative 2 plus or minus, like negative 16 over 2. Okay. And then after that, I think I just got confused with the I, and that's what kind of threw me off. Okay. Bit. Good. Hallie, are you following up on this one or doing something different? I have a question, but it's still. Oh, this is a follow up. Okay. Yeah. A Let's get the follow up done, and then we'll get to you next, okay? Yeah. So I understand like the whole thing of this, but when you subtract the x squared from the 2x uh, squared, mm -hmm. how come it gives you x squared and they don't cancel out our mind or something? Okay. So the way that you would want to think about this is like the x squared is just like a label, right? Yeah. So if you have two apples minus one apple, you still get one apple left. Apple is just the label. x squared is just the label. Okay. Adding and subtracting is never going to change an exponent. Okay. Or change. It's only going to change the quantity of the variable. Never the. So that's why the two this year is you just get the x squared. Right. Is like. I got you. Right. I got you. Um. Megan and Alexis, did you guys have follow-ups on there, or did you have a new one? No. Okay, Megan, you have a follow-up? Yes. Okay. Yes, they can certainly be factorable. They now, now um, well, it's hard to design something that's factorable from the person writing the problem. 
it takes a bit more effort to make sure that you get something factorable. But even if it is factorable, is there going to be any harm using the quadratic formula? No. So you can, even if, if we're, all we're doing is solving, you just bulldoze straight to the quadratic formula and not look back. Even if it was factorable, you'll just end up, oh, I got 2 and 5 out of that. Guess I would have been able to factor it. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter. Is that okay? Maria. So the quadratic formula for a quadratic equal to zero is negative part was from the formula, and the two part was the coefficient on the x, exactly. Um, one thing should continue to say, though, about this problem that we just finished is I box this problem, like box my answer. There's one thing we should have done before we checked or before we box that answer is just to check to make sure that that answer is not extraneous. Now, in this case, that check is trivial because the answer is imaginary. Like the imaginary answer can never be extraneous. But, okay, so let's... Let's go back and look at um, this was problem 10, I believe, had an extraneous solution because you also should have gotten x equals 3 as an answer. Now, notice I didn't list x equals 3 because if I went and plugged it back in here, I'd get like a zero denominator didn't give me a zero denominator. Yeah, but where did we get two solutions? Well, you had two solutions last time because you have a plus or a negative one plus two i and a negative one minus two i. That makes sense. Thank you. So there's actually two solutions there. Yeah. Whenever we solve quadratic, we're really getting two solutions unless it's the identical solution, which does happen on occasion where you get the same answer twice. That makes sense. Hallie. Okay. Um, I am confused how to do, um, like, it's like base 7, 8. Um, From the review you're looking at? Yeah, it's just like subtract. Adding. Like, subtract the rest of the stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I understand, like, the bottom part, we kind of factor it out, but then I'm kind of confused, like, what goes next. Yeah. Um, I think you just do one of those. Can you do 8? Yes. Hey, this is my turn. Raise your hand. You can go from the left side. Well, there's no reason we can't double team this question, right? Um, in general, this is the thing that I think you guys are the furthest away from, or the furthest away on from doing correctly, is the adding and subtracting when I look at your homework. So this is certainly something that I would have wanted to talk about. When you're done with this one, Mr. Cooler, can you be number six, too? The six is, like, simple. But well, let's start with, okay. Well, like, I think start with the simple case okay. and then move to the more complicated one. Less, less. Mm -hmm. Okay, and subtracting. We're going to want to start by factoring. So I'm going to factor my denominators. Multiplies to give me 8, adds to give me 6 is... And then the other denominator, multiplying, adds to give me 9 is 4. And denominator, I see three distinct factors. I see x plus 2, x plus 4, and x plus 5. Everybody agree with that? And since when I look at each individual fraction, each of those factors occurs at most one time, right? And this for just one time or zero times, and the factors occur one time or zero times. Everybody agree? So I know that that least common denominator I've written down is correct. Everything to the first power. Okay? So what I'm going to do now to make the common denominator is I'm going to look at the first fraction's denominator. I have the x plus 2 and the x plus 4, but I'm missing the x5. So I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom of that fraction by x plus 5. I'm then going to look at the second 
there I have the x plus 4 and the x plus 5, but I'm missing the x plus 2. Oh, exactly. Yep. So the x plus 5 times the x minus 1 is there. You have that addition sign out. So I'll foil this out. And when I add them together, I get 2x squared plus 9x plus 1. And there's one more thing I should at least give some thought to is reducing. Now, to reduce this, I would need to factor the numerator. Rarely is the numerator going to be factorable. And even more rarely than that, is it going to actually be reducible? But we do at least need to look and check. So to check this, you'd need to find the two. So there's no more factoring to do, no more reducing that could happen. That was as good as we could get. Again, it'll be very rare that there is something to do there, but it does happen on occasion. You should at least give it a cursory glance to be like, ooh, can I do it? Okay, so, uh, I did it again. You did. Aaron. Um, don't know why. Do you have a, Andrew's a brother? Yeah. Okay. At least that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know that I ever did, He's to be honest with you. Ten years? Well, I've been here for ten years, so maybe I did. I don't remember. It's so long. Um, so where did you? So at the very beginning. Uh huh. So I'm a little confused on like getting like those factors. So like the x plus four times x plus yeah, two. So how do I get those in? So I'm looking for the two numbers that multiply to give me 8, yeah. and then add to give me 6. Ooh, yeah, I, I remember that. Now. Yeah. And those numbers in this case would be 2 and 4. Um, so we're going to do 8 next, right? So, so 8 isn't bad, but it is if you don't catch... The, the factoring piece to go in there. So, again, the first step is to factor the denominators. The only denominator that factors is the first one. That is a difference of two cubes. So, Mr. Bullock, for a difference of two cubes, or two or three cubes, I already just said, that's only if you have x, or x to the power of three. Or that's the only time you use that formula. I mean, it could be like x to the multiple of three, okay. like x to the six, but I wouldn't have something that complicated in this chapter. We saw stuff like that in chapter five. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Looks good, though. But, yeah. Okay. Is that, Alexis, yeah. you see the, how that's going to work? A and B in, so X and 1. So that's how that first factors. Notice that the B in this case is 1, even though B cubed is 1, because 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. So, oh, no, 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 the B is positive 1. The negative sign is part of the formula. So your, yes, your values for A and B are going to be positive no matter what. When you plug them into the formula, negative signs are already in the right places for you. Okay? Okay. So now that we see that, factoring, see that your least common multiple, or least common denominator is just going to be that.
right? I have two distinct factors. Those are the two distinct factors. They occur no more than one time in any given fraction. Is that okay? Yeah. So if I look at the first fraction, that's all set, right? It already has the least common denominator. I don't have to do anything to that one. You guys buy that? Yes? I'm missing the x squared plus x plus 1. So I'll multiply by that. And if I look at the last fraction, I'm missing the x minus 1. So I'll multiply by that. The x plus 1 was already there. That's what we're missing in the blue. I did, right there. Uh, did you see it, Haley, or no? Oh, I did the whole thing. So this is from the yellow piece. As soon as my pen wants to write, blue piece. And that's from the green piece. Is that better, Haley? Yeah, I was just confused. Like, okay, so I see this like an x plus 1. So I was confused why you wouldn't write the x minus 1 on x squared plus x squared. So in the green fraction, I already have x squared plus x plus 1 in the denominator. So the piece that I needed was just the x minus 1. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. I think that makes sense. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Okay. Can I ask a question? It's okay. Alexis, did you sort out where everything is coming from? It'll always be the least common denominator will be the big denominator, yes. Joe. Um, so like, I understand what you did, but for the denominator uh, point of view, like, so whatever, we look at the denominator to help us figure out what we want to put in our numerator. Kind of like, like yes, missing. yeah, whatever is missing from the denominator is what you multiply the whole right. fraction by. So, okay, yeah, so like for example, like the 2x over the x minus 1, we already have the x minus 1 in the denominator, mm -hmm. so we don't need to include that, we just kind of put the x squared plus the x plus 1. Yes. And then like put other ones obviously the same. Yes, right. exactly. All right. And again, I just shortcutted through some of the writing out of the steps, right? Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. You're welcome. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, I got to multiply the stuff out in the numerator and then combine like terms, right? So nothing to do with the first piece. The second one I just need to distribute. And FOIL the last one. Here's the place where we have to be careful, though. When I FOIL out the last one, the negative sign has to apply to everything that we foiled. So that's a place where I would say the majority of students forget to distribute that negative. It's a very easy mistake to make. I'm warning you that how easy it is right now so that hopefully come test time and you might have to distribute a negative that you don't forget to do that. It's on the subtraction problems where you have to worry about that. Now if I combine my like terms, I have the only cubes I have are there. Bless you. I have 1x squared, 3x squared, minus one more gives me 2x squared. I have just the 2x there. Another one is 2.
Is that okay with everybody? Just combining some like terms there. Can you just go over that one more time, please? Sorry about that. It's okay. So the only x cubes I have are there. Yeah. Yep. And then my x squareds are here, here, and here. Yeah. So one plus two minus one is two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then my um, only x's are right there. So I have a plus two x. And then I have just the uh, one and one is two. Okay. Now here I have to be a little bit careful because I noticed right away that there's a greatest common factor here in the numerator. So there might be some factoring that I can do and possibly some reducing on this problem. So I'm going to take that greatest common factor of 2 out. Oops. And that piece that I'm left with has four terms in it, right? If you think back to chapter five, the technique we can use to try to factor something with four terms is grouping. So I'm gonna try to factor this by grouping. So the first group I can take out an x squared. The second group I can just take out a one. But that's good because over is the same, so I can finish this up factor by grouping style. If I take out the x plus 1s, and can I factor x squared? No, right? That's a sum of two, of two squares, which we can't do anything with. So there is actually no more reducing, so it would have been okay still here, but this answers a little bit better because we know that there's no reducing to do because there's nothing to cross out. So that's probably how I would write the answer, but it wouldn't be wrong if you had stopped at the other place where I put okay at. Megs? Uh, well, I, that's how we end up with that right there. So, so again, remember when you're factoring it out, you're just dividing, right? You can always pull a 1 out. If I distribute the 1 back through, nothing changes. Uh, because I need something here, right? There's always a 1 there whether we want to write it or not, right? And 1 is this one when I finish the factoring up. If I don't put anything there, you're apt to just write a zero there, and that's not right. So then we this piece would be x plus 2, right? If that, if that 1 was a 2 instead. Oh, sorry. Ugh. I'm sorry. The one that we're talking about is this one. My mistake. Thank you. So that's 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 what's going on, Megan. I'm just saying hypothetically. Okay, I can't hear the conversation because you guys are horsing around over there, so zip it, please. Yes, go ahead. So why is x squared? So if I look at the greatest common factor of x squared, if I look at this, the only greatest common factor there is 1, right? So the part that's left is now identical, x plus 1, that's this part. And the stuff that's remaining is that part. Is that what you needed? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. 
But we don't even have to go that far, do we? I mean, I, we do, but like, you you should check. It's probably a good idea too. Yeah, Aaron. Uh, did you do one of those like um, one graph, like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen? Sure. Does anybody have a preference on those? Anybody? The one that when I stopped scrolling, it landed on. When we the vertical asymptote is H and the horizontal asymptote is K. So in our case, and the K is negative two. So this we use the vertical asymptote in the middle of our table. Now I'm going to pick three values that are less than that, and then three values that are greater than that. And any really three will do, but like why wouldn't you pick them right in order? I don't know. It'd be silly not to, I guess. And now to get the corresponding y values, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take like the negative 4 and plug it in for the x and evaluate. Now this is a place where if you're using your calculator to do that, which I suspect most of us are, you have to be very careful because your calculator is going to be very literal and from the look of what a lot of you guys gave me, I don't think a lot of you are getting, your calcul getting this stuff into your calculator correctly. And I think the easiest way to do this um, because it will allow you to put it in your calculator exactly as it looks on your sheet of paper, which is nice. Um, as soon as my calculator wants to open, I don't know why, I don't think I closed it, but apparently it decided that uh, it wanted to close anyways on me. While I'm waiting for this to load, let's just say a few words. So for the test, um, I am going to allow you guys to bring a sheet of notes. So like half of a standard size sheet of paper. You can write on both front and back. Must be handwritten. You can't type it down and like telescope it to like three font and bring a magnifying glass. But you can write that small. You can use it. Okay, but it has to be handwritten. Um, and then you'll have to turn it in with the test. But you can put whatever you'd like on there. A half a sheet that you can use front and back. And I and really I want that instead of a full sheet one side because it's easier for me to see. No. Yes. Yeah, you can put like the difference of two cubes or sum of two cubes formula. You could put the quadratic formula. You could put example problem on there. I don't care what you put on there. Okay. Um, it is going to help you the most, whether they're calculator command or definitions or formulas or whatever. That's fine. You have to turn it in with the test. But you can you can do that. Um, as I know, several of these concepts here kind of get a little overlapping, right? And so it's easy to get confused on stuff. Maybe just having an example problem of each type be helpful. I don't know. I'm not you. You can put on whatever you think is going to be most helpful for you. I'm going to give you the freedom and the independence to kind of think about what's going to be helpful for you and make your notes to fit you, what you need. Um, again, I think spending some time and thinking about what it is that you need is I can't believe this thing is so... F I've been waiting for like three minutes for this stupid thing to open. Um, anyways, so again, like, take some time here in the next day or two to kind of put that together. Again, if you want to look at your friends and be like, oh, I didn't put that on there, that's a good thing to have. Like, that's fine. But you need to write your own. It has to be handwritten has to be like a normal size, like seven and a half by 11 or whatever, a normal size sheet of paper is. You can't bring in half a poster board and be like, this is the sheet of paper I had. 
you know, or like one of those presentation like flip boards or something. It's like a sheet of that paper. You know, like let's be real. I really wonder if teachers did put boundaries on things like that. Some students no, really some you put boundaries on that because some yeah. student has done that. Seriously? Yeah, of course they have. Like some jokers come in with like or like a legal sheet of paper. You know how like the legal sheet is real long or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, this half a legal sheet of paper. That's all I had at my house were legal pads. And it's like, get the heck out of here. If, I mean, you could do less if you wanted to. I don't know why you would want to. And apparently my calculator just is not going to open. So that's really disappointing for me. I don't know why it's being so stubborn. But it is time for you guys to go, unfortunately. So I have to... Let you go. We're going to show alpha, y, yes. one, and then fraction. Yes. So you can do, yeah. And then if you do, you're welcome. Thank you. Do math and then decimal afterwards. It'll okay. give you it as a decimal. Right. Which is probably more helpful for you with what we're doing, right? So would it, so would it just be like, so here, this let me show you. Yeah. Yeah. So I would do alpha y equals. Okay. That opens the fractions menu. We want the first option, which is numerator over denominator. Okay. And I'll do three, and then negative four plus one, okay. and then minus two. Yeah. And then to make sure you get an answer that's a decimal, coming up to math, and choose the decimal command, okay. and press enter. Okay. And then I can just, to change this then, if I press second and enter, it'll give me the last thing I typed in. Okay. And I can just scroll back and edit. Okay. And just yeah. keep going and like, them out now. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. And, and that's... Plug it in and graph them. Yeah, and then you just plot them and... Yep, okay, that makes sense to me, yeah. Is that okay? Yep. If you get good. stuck on anything, come back and see me. Then. I'm okay. happy to yep. help you out a little bit more, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Megarones. So, for this question, um, I think on the key it has this. Yeah, so the, there is a, that's supposed to be an eight. Okay. Not a four, because I forgot about the two. Okay. Um, so, like... That and that should make that an eight. But continue. For like this one, why would you need to like factor anything out, and why would it not be like plus one after you did it? Okay, so if I take a negative one out, uh -huh. this is going to become negative, and that would become positive, right? Oh, okay. But so like, why would like... you need to? Do because it reduced the number of factors that I have in my least common denominator. Hi. Can I have one minute? Yeah, I'll be right with you. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. So that is the same thing as this, right? Okay. The why I did it is because if I didn't, then I also have this as part of my least common denominator. Is it not the same thing as... That? No. That one, the x is positive and the one is negative, right? It is a different thing. Okay. That's why I did that is so it reduces the number of factors I need in my least common denominator. Uh -huh. Because I'd rather have a negative one in there than another polynomial. Yeah. Because it makes any reducing in the future going to be way easier if all I have to do is get rid of a negative sign than a okay. x minus one or something. That makes more sense. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a quick question. So, um, yes, cast, you know, right? Notre Dame, yeah, it okay. said that I, it was incomplete, but okay. I don't know if it didn't think. It or, might not have. Because so, I had done it, and I just didn't want you to think that I had done it last night, so I came in right look, today. Look, there's no, it's not a big deal. Okay. Like, even if it's a sink issue, it's just a sink issue. It's okay. not a big deal. Yeah, because I did through 62 over there, and the rest yeah. of them were just down. Yeah, I think it, like, it just stopped after 40 something and just okay. was blank on mine. Okay. So, just send me an email to remind me that, like, hey, it was just a sink issue, it's done. All right. And I'll recheck it. Okay. We'll update things in a minute. Thank you. You're welcome. 
And again, that's no big deal. If you notice something like that's happened, just send me an email and be like, hey, I don't think things were synced correctly, so I just resynced and can you check again?